Hello and welcome back to 30 Days to Learn Photoshop. This is day 9, the brush tool. I'm Ben Gribbin and in today's lesson we're going to be considering the brush tool and its many features. So let's go ahead and switch over to Photoshop, which is obviously the start. So we're going to select the brush tool, we're going to show you how it works, uh, how it can be used and all kinds of different things. So let's start by just showing you where the brush tool is and how you can access it. So you need to go onto this icon here, and it's called the brush tool, that's its official name. If you press B, that will also change you to the brush tool, let's just show you that. Let's say we're on there, if we press B, that will return us to the brush tool. Okay, so that's how you get to the brush tool. Now, we're just going to fill in this page, just so it isn't uh, hurting your eyes. And in order to do that, you click on this drop-down menu here. Now this drop down menu is your basic brush settings and it allows you here to change the size of the brush head and also it can change the hardness. So if we click on one of these standard brush heads, these are the, the built in brush heads. We can change the size and you can see there we're making this bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's go and change the, the foreground color to black just so we're not looking at those squares. And that's all you need to do to use it. Essentially, you just click and drag and draw. So if we just show you that again, this time we'll change the setting of the brush head so it's a little bit bigger, but the hardness is down to zero. So you'll be able to see the difference between the two. If we just select one of these swatches. That's a softer brush head. So you can see the edges compared to the one we just will do now. Let's change the hardness. You can see the edges are softer, more gentle, whereas these are hard, very contrasty edges. So you can use that completely to your advantage. Now there's some more settings for the, the brush tool up here on the options menu. We've got the mode, the opacity, and the flow. Now those are three main ones that you will use. So we're going to consider the blending mode now. So if you click on to dissolve, what this will do is essentially add noise to the very edge of the brush. Now it's a little bit difficult to see when we're using the very hard heads, but if we just make a soft head, let's change it to a um, softer head, you'll be able to see it's a lot more noisy, almost like spray paint in actual fact. So you can see the difference between that one, that one, and that one there's a lot more noise in that one you can use that to add grunge um, if you were painting in some leaves and things like that to make it a little bit less obvious you could dissolve the edges okay so we're going to show you the behind mode now this is interesting because it works essentially like layers except it isn't it's on one layer so you can use this to your advantage uh, to create cutouts painting behind see-through areas but not having to switch layers uh, keeping your illustration simple and all kinds of things. So let's go ahead and paint one black line here. We'll do it in normal mode. So in effect, it's going to be the top layer. So let's do that. Just like so. Then if we change the color of our brush, so you can just tell the difference. And we click on behind. It paints behind this top brush stroke. Now you can use that to your advantage to create layered up elements and all kinds of different settings uh, and, and looks so, so it's a little bit different but it's a very handy tool to be able to use and you can see it just keeps going back and back and back so every time we change the color here we're actually painting behind the area that we've just created when you let go of your brush tool in, a, in essence it's just going back another layer but this is actually all in one layer so if we go over to the layers palette here, you can see that is all one layer. So that's just a quick way of being able to create really interesting effects, especially when you're working with photographs. And then finally, this is the clear mode, and it basically works just like the eraser tool. If we were to just zero that, you can see it's just erasing everything that we've done. So you can use that instead of using the eraser tool because this would actually be set to the same settings as the brush that you used, whereas the eraser doesn't have the same settings by default. Next to the color mode, you will see opacity and flow. 
Now these two are very slightly different and we're going to show you how now. So let's change to a red color just so you can see it contrasted against the white background. And we're going to change the opacity of our brush. In fact, we'll do one line as the normal and then we'll do one line as a reduced opacity. So this is our normal red line. Full strength, that color is coming out as the softness we've set and the brush head size we've set. If we change the opacity, however, it will actually reduce the amount of color that's coming out. It reduces the strength and in effect, it makes it see through. So as you can see here, these gray and white boxes, which we've talked about that denote transparency, are actually partly showing through our brush strokes here. If I do it again, it will start to bring the color closer and closer to this color. But what it actually does is also reduces the see-throughness as it does that. So you can see eventually we'll end up with full strength color. Now you can use that when you are working with photographs, when you're working with images where you want to subtly change them and you change the opacity just to make things less obvious. So if that's opacity then what is flow? Well flow is kind of similar to opacity however even if you start off down at zero or, or as close to zero as you can get let's just say one percent what it does is it paints and if you keep going over that area it will increase the strength of the color until eventually you're near the red color so it's kind of like using uh, an airbrush I suppose you could use this to really create soft gentle changes in uh, color and also if you're working with a photograph if you were manipulating the image you were able to really really create soft blemishes uh, and changes to that photograph so that's the flow tool you can see as we're going over the area that we've previously been on as long as we don't let go it's creating a stronger and stronger and stronger color so that's flow and opacity so then we're going to look at the brush settings now this is a panel in the sidebar panel which allows to change all kinds of dynamics to do with the brush head itself so you can see here we've got all the hardness settings that we had before but also we can change the roundness so we can actually start tweaking around with the way the brush is going to be applied to the page so this is almost like a, a calligraphy style pen head now um, we can change the rotation we can change the roundness we can change the orientation of the actual brush we can flip the single brush and you can change pretty much everything you want let's just show you some of the the main things that you would actually want to change and we're going to do that by using a very slightly different brush all you need to do to select a new brush is on either this panel or that one when you're working with the brush normally you'd probably use this one click the drop down menu and just select your new brush if it's a custom brush you won't be able to set the hardness of it because it is a certain hardness but the basic brushes you can change all those settings for so let's click on this brush head here this is going to allow us to show all the different dynamics and settings we can input so you can put spacing in if you wanted and this allows you to as the name suggests space out the different brush heads so you could actually create the effect of having pop rivets using this one let's just change the size if we show you that along there, change the flow back up again. If we go along here like that, that creates the effect of actually having pop rivets. And we can change the spacing again if we need to do so. So let's go onto there again. We can keep going. And we can also turn that off. Uh, let's go back to the basic photo brush. That will just create a nice smooth line. If we go into shape dynamics, this is going to give us all sorts of jitter settings. So let's just go back to one of those screw heads go onto the brush panel and if we click on shape dynamics turn those on size jitter allows you to actually create almost like a chalk or wet brush watercolor style brush heads uh, you can control it by using your stylus wheel on your mouse or, or if you're using a, a tablet you can use that and also you can have it fade out so if we just show you that over here let's change the size of that if we go down here it changes the size 
of the brush head fades it out but also you can see instead of it just being one of those screw heads it has got like a sort of brushed effect and that's from the size jitter so if you were using stars and things like that you could use this partly with angle jitter and roundness jitter to be able to create stars snow all kinds of things the minimum minimum diameter just tweaks this end where we where we're fading it out using whichever control we're working with and the angle jitter rotates the the heads of the screw in this case and it does that randomly so it, it helps you create all kinds of different effects let's just space it out so you can see a little bit better what it's doing if we go back to shape dynamics and we change the angle jitter you'll notice all the screw heads are changing randomly towards each other and again you can control that by the direction you're going in or you could change it using the stylus wheel pen till pen pressure and the roundness jitter that essentially squashes and changes the perspective of the different brush heads so again creating a really cool completely different kind of brush just by changing these settings and these are all based upon the original brush it's still that sort of screw head brush so you can see it's just using the eraser tool here to take it back just so we can show you some more of the brush settings so this is our now uh, shape dynamics and I believe that's the the roundness jitter that we've got set on there if we combine them together we can start having them look like they're uh, spattered about and and all sort of things like that also scattering this is a good tool this helps you start to make them thicker and wider again you'd, if you were using stars and things like that you'd be able to create the effect of shooting stars space snow backgrounds that sort of thing let's just undo those also under scatter by changing the the count it actually changes the amount of scattering so you can see that's not very dense that one is so that's how you change the count of your scattering dual brush this allows you to in effect within a brush paint brushes so I know that sounds a little bit complicated but we've got our original brush selected now we're selecting a secondary brush which is in effect going to mask off or stencil out those previous brushes so I'm going to show you this by using um, a more dense first brush we'll set it on this brush now and if you watch this now it's actually masking out the edges of the previous brush into sort of circles so that's quite handy works very well and again you can then change the scatter the size and the count for that brush color dynamics you can actually change within scatters you can have all the different brushes randomly changed colors you can have them sort of go through a color range which is handy if you're using leaves or grass things like that and then finally down here we've got things like noise which will add noise to the edges of your brush heads and wet edges this is a way of being able to make them look like they've been uh, stenciled on using watercolors or using some sort of permanent marker if you just see the difference there looks very saturated and under contrasted and almost like it's got wet edges and then finally smoothing just smooths out the edges of the different brushes so finally we are going to look at how to load in new brush heads now you can actually down, download and purchase brushes online from websites like graphicriver.net and they're very very simple to use there's also free websites that offer them and you can you can purchase grunge brushes and all sorts of different styles and effects when you're working with photographs they really will help you out and also when you're doing website designs and things like that now these are the built-in Photoshop sort of default brushes and in order to get to that menu all I've done is clicked on the drop down brush window and then clicked on this new the kind of preset brushes drop down so if we go on the basic brushes and you will notice it asks you whether you want to replace current brushes with the brushes from the basic brushes which is a bit of a mouthful press OK and 
don't save. So that's just reset our brushes to the default Photoshop brushes. If we were, if we wanted to load or switch to a new brush set, all you need to do is click on that new set. You can append it, which means it will be added to the end of the current set you've got, just in case you wanted to be able to use that again. And in order to load new brushes, all you have to do, hit the load brushes panel. And if we just type in ABR, an ABR is a brush file. Apparently we don't have any on the computer. But all you need to do is locate the brush file. Uh, and then if you go ahead and click on those brush files, you're able to load them in. It will ask you if you want to append it or completely replace the current brush sets. And also you can reset brushes, save them and replace them using this menu here. There's a number of viewing options. You can have them as a word display. You could have them with a, a larger thumbnail just to make browsing through them a little bit easier. So what have we learned in today's lesson? Well, we've looked at brush tool basics. We've looked at how we can change brushes. We've looked at how we can load new brushes. And we've also considered blending modes. We've looked at how to paint behind using dissolve and things like that. And the task for the lesson is to practice using the brush tool, changing your brushes and painting using different blending modes. So just practice and see what you can uh, make an experiment on. Next time on 30 Days to Learn Photoshop, we'll be looking at the history tool. Thanks for listening.